Perfect. Okay. Cool. All right. So today, um, first of all, any questions, any administrative stuff, concerns, anything you guys want to talk about? Um, I had a question about the homework, but I don't know if I should ask it here. Or is this a good time or is that more about office? Okay. Um, it's, um, at least in my end, it shows up as the last question and it's uh, asking how many packets get exchanged at the end of the, this is vector algorithm um, for the uh, graph shown. Um, and I was going over the algorithm a little bit and um, I'm not sure if I'm understanding the question right, um, as it seems that the initialization state of the algorithm, right at the beginning off the bat, it has every node essentially share its own uh, cost with its um, neighbors. And that alone would already, I think, have more than 11 updates sent. And I think like the largest number is 11. Um, so I was a bit confused about that. I don't know if I'm going in about it a wrong way or I'm just misunderstanding the question. Let me pull up the question. One sec. Uh... This is maxim maximally how many packets are sent out. OK. Uh, yeah, that one. Ah, OK. Um, So what I have an answer key here is that there are five initial updates. Five initial updates are part of the um, part of the answer. Now, the network is like okay. I'm trying to remember what the network looks like. Um, let me go and edit these questions. Um, okay, actually, I don't want to do that. Okay, I kind of remember the network. Um, so. I guess the difference is that, uh, sorry, I'm trying to find the right window. Okay, so I guess if you, you can think of it as there, initially there are five, there are five initial updates, which is the act of the protocol actually sending the message, uh, the initial message out. Now it might go out multiple links, um, but it's still one message being sent. So there's different ways of um, interpreting this. I think in this case, uh, the question says how many packets are sent. So I think links on which um, those messages are being sent. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. Wait, so uh, just to make sure I'm, I'm getting this straight. Um, so then the update of every node at the beginning, um, even though it's being updated to say like two or three neighbors, that would just count as one because it's like one update. Yep, that's what the answer key says. Now I think I think it's wrong because then the question should say how many messages are sent out, not how many packets. All right, because once we talk about packets, we're talking about you know individual packets on the network. Um, or I could I should rephrase the question and say how many messages. Have one message being sent through basically the same message being sent through multiple packets of different things. Um, unique packets. Um, I might I might reword the question to mean something like that. So basically, then initially you would say that there's one unique packet being sent from let's say some node on all these different links. Got it. I think that I think sense. that would make yeah. That, I think that would make a lot more sense. Um, I'll yeah. rework um, the question with that uh, idea in mind now. Thanks. <laughs> okay, and I'll and I'll update the wording to make that clear and make a note of that. Right. 
Thank you for that. Yeah, thanks for answering. Thanks. Cool. Anything else? Great. All right. Let's talk about the programming assignment, uh, PA3. So I'm going to share. Um, Okay. Cool. Okay, so this is programming assignment three. Um, we're delving to uh, and we'll have two assignments in there. One is the data plane, which is basically forwarding data and kind of IP stuff. Um, and then we'll have a control layer, which has to do with routing. So the first one is data plane. Um, and um, you will be basically implementing packet segmentation um, and implementing forwarding data through routing tables. Those are the, the two parts of the assignment. So I'll go over the starting code in a second. But basically, we um, have a simulation um, file, which is what runs this code, that organizes a network of hosts and routers. Okay. We have a network layer, which implements hosts and routers. Um, and then we have a data link layer, which implements the links that forward um, data between interfaces. Okay, so a host will have, let me see, there's a better picture now. Okay, so a host will have an interface here, okay, a network interface. Now, the router will also have an interface here. Okay, so the network layer will basically do the action of forwarding data, sucking data from this interface and then inputting into that interface. Okay, there'll be a thread just forwarding data on each of those links from one interface to another. Okay. There will be another thread running inside the router, which will basically forward data from this incoming interface to this outgoing interface. Okay. And the collection of these forwarding actions will forward data from one host, whatever that host writes to this interface, to this interface, then through the router, and then through another link to another host where it's received. So what we have here is basically the network layer, which implements the network layer functions at the host router and the other host. Okay. And then we have the data link layer, which we didn't talk about, but it's basically a link that just takes data from interfaces and puts them onto other interfaces. And that's all you need to know about it for now. And it just magically connects interfaces. All right, so you start simulation py, um, and then we have the grading rubric, which also kind of defines tasks that you're supposed to do. Um, so, actually, before we get into this, let me show you. Let me show you the code. Okay, so the first is simulation so what we're importing here is the network layer and the link layer. And there's a bunch of other imports which kind of make this thing run. Doesn't terribly matter for now. Um, okay. So what we're setting up is um, a something called a client, which will be host one. So from the network layer, we'll impose host and we'll give it the address one. So this is not IP addressing. This is just kind of assigning IDs to these nodes. Um, then we'll have a, a server, which is just another host, which corresponds to this net, network picture I just showed you guys about, uh, showed you guys earlier. Okay, and then we can define a router. We can call it router A. Um, you can give it a name. Uh, you can say it has one uh, one interface, um, which is basically one incoming and one outgoing interface. Okay, um, you can specify its queue size, and you can specify its uh, maximum transmission unit, which is how big are the packets that are gonna that it's gonna accept on its interfaces. Okay, so we have the three objects: the client, the server, and the router. Okay, then we can create a link layer, which is the set of links connecting these different nodes. Okay, um, we're gonna keep track of all these different objects through this object list. This is basically for shutting everything down later on. 
Okay, so once we have a link layer, we can add links. And so we can create a link object, which is between client interface zero and router interface zero. Okay, and then between router interface zero and server interface zero. Both interfaces zero um, is because this is an incoming interface and this is an outgoing interface. They have separate separate numbering. Okay, so you have one incoming interface from client uh, and then one outgoing interface server. And just a very simple unidirectional link model. Um, it's completely great for now. Um, it makes things a little bit easier later on. And then actually in the control um, plane assignment, we'll make these interfaces bi-directional um, to make some things in that assignment a little bit easier. Okay, so we have our objects, we have our links, which links our up, which link our objects. Okay? And then for each object uh, in this object list, okay, we're going to basically create a thread that runs that object. Okay, and then we'll create a thread list. For each thread that we created, we're going to start it. Okay, so that means there's a thread for in client, server, router, and uh, network. Basically, link layer. Okay, we're going to start the forwarding threads in those. Okay, then you can invoke actions at all nodes. For example, the client will call UDT send with uh, some data that is destined for node two, which is the server. Okay, so you can basically get the clients to take some actions for, to send some data. And then you, we're gonna read, let this thing run, let these threads run for some time. Um, and then when it's done running, you can basically uh, tell the, these objects to stop running and then wait for the threads to join. And then we're done with the simulation. Okay. So will we have to do anything with the threading or is all the threading taken care of on this project? Um, it should, you will need to create a simulation which has more objects in here. Okay. But it shouldn't require you to change anything about the threading. I'll show you okay, exactly great. where where you guys need to make the changes. Um, okay. So that's simulation. And this is actually uh, a pretty straightforward network simulator. Um, you can get deeper. Uh, this is like basically a simple, which is nice because I want you guys to do just one, just a couple specific things in here. And network simulators can be kind of rival the complexity of networks themselves, of network protocols themselves. The nice thing is that they all run on the same device, so you can kind of control everything and everything is on shared memory, but they can still get extremely complex. So this one doesn't have that limit, doesn't have that complexity, right? And they all work in this similar way, right? Where you create some, you create some nodes um, and then you create some links and then the simulator basically forwards data between nodes on the links. Like that's all the network is. So there's some threads running in the background kind of doing this forwarding or maybe everything has kind of some lockstep. Uh, let's look at different layers. About simulation. Oh, cool. um, so then we can look at uh, network. Yes, network is the next one. Okay. We have the definitions for the different objects. Um, I'm going to skip interface for now. Okay, so we have net. I mean, skip network packet too for now. What we have is host. Okay, um, and what we have is router. Okay, so a host will have um, will initialize with some address. Okay, this is just a number. This, we could have made this IP addresses, but I don't think it's necessary for this assignment, so we don't. Um, and then it has the maximum transmission unit. Um, so it also has this in interface and an out interface, okay? So just a single one. 
Uh, so these are unidirectional interfaces. They're not like router interfaces where you can have data coming in and out. We, we separate them logically into different objects. Okay. And it's a list of just one object, which includes one interface, and the MTU of that interface comes from this parameter. Okay. So what the interface is, is defined up here. Okay. It's basically a queue. Okay. So the only things in here is the MTU value, uh, which it takes from uh, the constructor, and it has a queue. And then you can do two things. You can get a packet from that interface, okay, or you can put a packet on that interface. Now, the put has an option called block. Okay, so either when you enqueue something, your code will block until you can actually add the thing to the queue, or it can throw an exception. Okay, so when it throws an exception, basically we'll catch the exception later on and the packet will be lost. And so this basically, this interface just basically models a queue at a router or at a, or at a host. Okay, so the host um, can have UDT send, which will basically put the packet on an out interface, okay? And it has UDT receive, which will pull a packet from an in interface. Okay, and then it has a thread which uh, will uh, basically keep running UDT receive. Um, and basically print out whatever whatever arrives at that node. Okay, so that's the host. Um, the router then has multiple interfaces. Okay, so we can have interface count, which you can change to make a router have more interfaces. Okay. And we basically set up a list of interfaces, and now that list can be kind of longer, right? So we're gonna create an interface with max Q size and MTU for, uh, or basically for interface count. So as many as we specify here, we're gonna create a list of interfaces that we define in this constructor. And now what the router does is basically forwards data. Okay, so for each set of interfaces or for each interface, for each incoming interface, it will try to look at the packet that came on this interface and make a forwarding decision. For now, it will just, if packet comes in on interface in zero, it will go out on interface in zero. Okay, there's, there's basically this one-to-one -one mapping, but Part of your job will be to do smarter forwarding where we're not just moving from interface with some number to interface with, from an in interface with some number to an out interface with the same number. Right? That's just not very smart routing. There's nothing going on. You're just basically passing from left to right. Okay? So part of your job will be to implement something here. All right, and then <clears throat> what we're sending around is uh, uh, packets, which we define the packet class here. Kind of similar to what you have done before. Um, this basically just keeps a just keeps a number. I think that's the only thing that's in the packet right now. Um, uh, this sorry destination address, uh, not not a number. Okay. Um, have the links, which is in link.py. Okay. And with the link, we have a class link and we have a class link layer. So a link is basically just a link between two, the from node and the to node, and then the from interface of that from node, and then the to interface from the to node. So we create a link between, honestly, between this interface and this interface. Okay. Um, that's what gets saved here. Okay. And then the only function that's in here is transmit packet, okay, which will basically move data from here to there. That's all it does. It just moves data from the from the from interface to that to interface. And the link layer um, has these functions of add link, okay, which is which is what we use in simulation to say. These are all the links. They are part of this of this network layer. So we add all these links. 
to the link list. Okay. And then we run a thread which basically calls transfer here and transfer calls link transmit packet, which just moves packets from left side to the right side of the link. And so the, li so the link layer is a collection of links. And when we run its run thread, it goes through all the links and just moves one packet over continuous. Now this transfer is interesting in that if the, the packet being transferred is larger than the maximum transmission unit of an interface, that packet will be dropped. And so if the packet doesn't fit, it gets, it gets dropped. Um, and that's it. That's the sim. That's the code. Um, any qu questions right now before we jump into the rest of the assignment? Yeah. So if the packet's too big and it gets dropped, do we have to account for splitting the packet up into smaller bits and uh, send yes. it through? Okay. Yes. So that's yep. That's part of the assignment. Um, great. great. Let me go into that. Okay. I jumped in late, so if you already went over this, then. Oh, no worries. No, I did it. I was just getting into it. Um, okay. I was just going over the, if someone has questions about the code, but we can jump back into it as well, once you guys have some more context. So the first thing that happens in the simulation is we're sending um, three very short messages, and they go right through. Um, I can show you guys that in a second. Um, and so what I'm asking you guys first for two points is to basically send a big message. Um, and actually, let me share, let me share. Uh, so you guys can see what I mean. Okay. So here in simulation, we are sending three small packets. The first thing you can do is you can comment this out and send a big packet. And by big packet, I mean more bytes in here. Okay, client, UDT sends, lots of data. Okay. Um, when you're sending, let's see, so this is the assignment. But what do you mean sending big bytes in there? Like, are we just gonna write a long message that might not fit or do we actually give it a byte number? Yep, you can do, what I do is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine and then zero one two etc right so i'm okay. basically creating a message 10 bytes at a time um all right I realize this isn't the most helpful i'm going to share the whole screen That'd be easier. so um first you're going to send along a long set of characters and then you'll notice that it, it's going to get rejected in by the different mtus Okay, so I can actually demonstrate this for you. So when you first transmit this, um, what you're seeing here is all the different hosts starting, the router starting, the network starting, okay? And then host one will send a packet. This is the packet, sample data zero. This basically comes out of here, but because we're using a network packet, there's also addressing of the, the destination uh, addresses included in here, okay? on the out interface with which has MTU 50. Okay, and then as this packet progresses, um, more stuff happens to it. So what I'm actually gonna do is I will send a single packet. So it's a little easy to track. Okay, so you can see this in sequence. So host one is sending the packet, okay? Then the link between host one interface zero and router A interface zero transmits the packet. Now the router gets the packet and does forwarding between of this packet from interface zero to interface zero, the in interface zero to the out interface zero, uh, which has an MTO of 50. Okay, then the link between the router and host two forwards the packet, and then host two receives the, the packet. And that's it, that's the simulation. Okay, so okay. If, you include, if you include lots of data, um, so something like this, 
Nine, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. Uh, I don't know how many that is, plenty. OK. When we send the long packet, you can see that it doesn't fit. Uh, basically, on the link, you get an error that uh, the packet is too long to be transmitted on from this interface. Okay. So the first job is to basically have UDT send split up that packet into something that can be transmitted. All right. So that's it. That's your first two points, basically free. <clears throat> now, what you can do then is you can look at the router interface in simulation. And instead of passing MTU 50, you can change it to MTU 30. OK, so now even though you split this packet in half, it's still not going to go through. Okay, It's going to get rejected at the router. And so to now get this to go through, you need to implement, uh, excuse me, you need to implement uh, IP fragmentation, which we discussed in class, um, to basically send smaller packets. Um, and so if the router has an interface that can't handle that packet size, that router should be then splitting those packets to be something smaller. Right, and then the host, when the host, the router will split the packets, and then the host, when the host gets those packets, will basically reassemble them. Okay, that's this. Um, and then the other part of this is to uh, set up a more complex topology in the simulation. Okay, and then forward data onto different using different paths. So data from host one should go to host three via router B, and data from host two should go to host four via router C. If I remember this correctly, That's what I said. Uh, yes. Okay. So to do this, you need to ex extend the router class in the network uh, router in it. Okay. Um, you need to extend this by passing in a routing table. Okay. You can pass in that routing table in simulation. You can basically hard code it to create you know this router, router A, router B, router C. Here's the routing table that I'm passing in. Okay, so it's statically configured. Now, once this table gets passed in here, it becomes part of the part of the router class. And then, when you are doing forwarding, instead of blindly forwarding from, um, you know, pulling data from interface from uh, interface I, and then pushing data out interface I. Instead of going from I to I, you can do a more complex decision here, or basically a decision that is defined by your routing table. So you can say, OK, instead of saying where the packet came from, you can say if the packet is addressed to a particular destination, then forward it out a particular interface. OK, and that decision can be hard coded into your routing table. But then once you pass the routing table in, the forwarding method basically relies on the routing table to make it to make its forwarding action. And that's it. That's the assignment. Questions? Um, is there a specific format for the routing table that we have to follow, or is that is just kind of up to us? Okay. Cool. It is up to you. I'm explicitly not um, defining it at the moment, but if you ask me questions about uh, specific, I'll be happy to, to provide hints for, for how to do it. It's not cool. Thanks. I, I'll, I'll make a point that it's not complicated. It just You just need to make sure you have all the information um, to make the routing decision or to make the, to make the forwarding decision. But any format is fine, really. 
as long as you can. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. And this is due two weeks from today, or I guess would be due two weeks from today. Um, that's a good question. Um, this is due, so I moved it down a little bit. Uh, so I was supposed to be assigned here. I moved it down. I guess we can do that. I'll update the due date. All right, great. Thank you. So if you want to submit by the due date, that's what it is. But if you if you're submitting late, that's cool too. Cool. All right, anything else? Anything else about this? Um, I'll make a point, this one is this one is is not hard. Uh, it's a little the hard part about it is is understanding how the simulation works and how it breaks down into layers. Um, happy to answer questions about it. It's pretty straightforward. It just might be new to you guys to to think of a net or doing. much easier than the other ones. Um, so it should be should be fun. All right, anything else? Going once. I have some homework questions. Uh, if you're doing like a Q&A session right now. Sure. Okay. So I was curious, I was having a tough time with the last three problems. Um, mm -hmm. And I thought I was just curious on, uh, let me open it up real quick somewhere in here. How to go about starting those, I guess. Um, like what sections of the book would be a good starting place or. Mm -hmm. That's basically, I think it's the, um, let me see. I'm opening it up. Okay, here we go. So it looks like it's the DV routing questions. Mm -hmm. um, and I need to figure out which router has the following table. So I'm a little, I'm still a little fuzzy on how those, uh, how to build those tables. Is this using Dijkstra's algorithm or is this, uh, is this something different? Uh, this is using the Bellman Ford. Bellman Ford, okay. The Bellman Ford. So uh, let me open the book section. For you to answer your questions in order. <clears throat> Great. Um, I remember vaguely going over it in class, um, but I guess I need to do a little review. Happy to do it. Uh, okay, what is this? Okay, so the book section is 522, 5.2.2. Pretty sure, double checking. Yes. Great. So that's, that's the book section. Um, okay. The part that we covered was in, I guess we talked about it um, two days ago. So I guess that would be Monday. Let me double check. Yep, Monday's lecture talked about it. So this is LS and DV routing was the lecture. And um, here is a set of slides for it, I'll share. Okay. 
So here's a set of slides. So given, given a network, right, nodes have these different starting tables. Um, do you remember this? Yeah, I remember watching this. Yeah, so so the nodes have these different have these different tables and then they exchange them with each other. And when a node receives this table, it goes through this process of updating um, the values in that table. And it either kind of you know ends up taking them from the other nodes as as in this case, but what it really does is it forwards it it performs this equation where it uh, sets each uh, cell in this table to the min of its distance to itself and the distance to uh, the destination that it's interested in, okay, or the distance to the node from which it's getting this table and um, the distance from that node to Z. Okay. Okay. So, for example, in for this cell, okay, node X is the one that's that's doing this, okay, and it can basically check um, the different possible paths to Z that it that it learns of, okay. So when it receives um, these tables, okay, it has these it has these other rows. So now it can check its distance to uh, itself, which is zero. Okay, so from it knows that from x to x, okay, from x to x is zero. Yeah, and from x um, to z, the value was uh, seven, uh, which was from here, right? So this is before this table was updated. So its input was from x to z was seven. Okay, so the cost of reaching um, X from itself was seven. Okay, so that's this path. Mm -hmm. Okay, or I guess this next hop. Okay. It can then evaluate another next hop. In this network, there's only one alternative, which is from which is two x through its next hop, which is y. Mm -hmm. It looks at its cost to y. Okay. Its cost to y is two. And then it can look at y's cost to z. Now, initially, does it know this? But when it receives this table which is Y's cost, now it knows that Y's cost to Z is, in fact, one. Okay? So it knows, X knows that its cost to Y is two, plus Y's cost to Z, which is one. And so the sum of that is three, which is lower than seven. And so X's cost to Z ends up being three. That's Belmont. Makes... That's Bellman. So when we're looking at the quiz, I'm asking you which node has the first question is which node has a particular. Right? Okay. So you can look you can look at this network, work through the Bellman Ford or the distance vector routing and figure out which node ends up with a table that looks like the one in the example. Okay. That's how you can go about answering that question. And I'm assuming the squigglies are uh, infinity. Yes. There's no link between the two is what it means. Like there's no link between V and Y. Yeah. Um, okay. Wait, actually, hold up. Let me double check on that. Let me double check on this one. Uh, sorry, so I don't give up the answer. Um, I think it's infinity because of. Uh, right, let me do this again. Well, yeah. Because it's just saying, like, what's the distance from V to Y? I mean, it doesn't have a link there, right? So it's just saying there is no link between the two. 
but there has so to be a relationship because the, it's not that there's a thing, there's there's a path. There's always a path, right? This is a fully connected network. So this right. quicker is, is infinity, right? Because you can always eventually compute, right? You can technically get from one any node to any other node. Um, but oh, you're saying in that row. Yeah, there's just no direct link. Each node, can still reach, each node can still reach any destination. And you should you should eventually get to a place where the, the distance from each node to any destination is known. All right, Justin, does this get you started well enough? Yeah, I think that should get me started. I'll kind of. I'll kind of run through it and see what what I can come up with. Okay. If not, I got a what one out of five chance of getting it right. I prefer we talk before it gets to that point. <laughs> All right, sounds good. I I'll have run more through. Thanks for, thanks for going through it. Oh, I appreciate you know. it. All right. <laughs> but technically, yes. <laughs> um, all right. Anything else, you guys? All right. Let's end it here. Um, let me know if any questions come up about the program assignments, etc. Um, and uh, yeah, have a good weekend. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.